Hello everyone, it's Mark Shalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars, and today we're going to be doing a very special video on a very special car. Uh, what I'd like to mention before I get into this uh, unbelievable car with an unbelievable story, I'd like to mention that it is going to be selling uh, at the upcoming Barrett Jackson auction, which is going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona, January 20th through the 28th. MS Classic Cars uh, is a proud seller at Barrett Jackson. We've been with Barrett Jackson since 2007. Uh, we've sold almost 300 cars at Barrett Jackson. We are actually offering a 19 vehicle collection. It's going to be epic. This particular car is part of that collection and some of the cars that are starting to fill up the showroom are as well. So make sure uh, if you're interested in this car after this video to visit our website at msclassiccars.com for all the details you can also go to barrettjackson.com for all the details there as well so let's get right into it uh, when i found this car it was almost too good to be true uh, there's many vehicles that I've found over the years, uh, whether they were referred to me or I found them in uh, magazine print or online or what have you. And sometimes I have to even pinch myself. Uh, and a car like this is one of those cars uh, where you just can't believe. Uh, I actually have it in our collection now and I'm super proud of it. So when I got it, uh, as I do with most cars, you know, I get binders filled with information. What I have to do is I have to actually go through all that information, uh, literally lay it all out, organize it all, and learn the details about a particular vehicle. Uh, that's exactly what I've done with this vehicle here. And what I do with every car that we sell is I create a brand new binder uh, with plastic sleeves. Most of the time those binders are one inch. In this particular case here, you can see that it's actually a two inch binder uh, with everything in, in order uh, that tells the entire story of this car. You can see a lot of this information on our website listing. I am gonna be referencing this throughout this video. Again, uh, I don't wanna bore you with details, but it is extremely important to hear the story of this car. Now, with Barrett Jackson, I have to take an amazing car like this with an amazing story, and I have to compose everything within 4,000 characters, including spaces. So I'm gonna read, stop, read, stop, and so forth throughout this presentation of everything I've written about this car. And the good news is, because it's only 4,000 characters, it will keep the video relatively short. So let's get into it. First thing I'd like to say, is this vehicle is nicknamed the Desert Rat. It's recognized worldwide because of its unbelievable story. This 1967 Chevrolet Corvette 427 435 horse big brake coupe with 42,586 actual miles is going to be inspected by Corvette expert Roy Siner this month. Matter of fact, he's coming here December 19th Again, this is 2023 to do a full inspection. For anybody that does not know Roy, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he was a really big uh, father figure, so to speak, at the NCRS. I believe 17 years, he was the judging chairman. Uh, he's written books. He is clearly a judge. He's really, uh, again, uh, somebody that's really highly recognized in the Corvette community. We're super proud to have him uh, come here. Uh, he has in the past. And again, I consider him a good friend. Definitely want to give him a shout out. Uh, we will again post his report and everything in our website listing once he comes, does what he needs to do, and so forth. Probably take a few weeks. This particular car here uh, retains its original VIN tag, original trim tag, original color combination, and original drivetrain. Uh, Roy has taught me, uh, just like many of the other experts in the business, uh, such as Jerry McNeish with our Camaro Z28s, uh, or David Weiss with our Mopars, that a lot of these highly desirable collectible muscle cars from the 60s and the 70s are fraudulently made. People rebody cars, they re-make uh, VIN tags, they make trim tags, they re-stamp engine blocks, 
Uh, they even create fake paperwork with these cars. So at MS Classic Cars, we like to buy cars that have been certified and inspected by the experts in the business. It's just one of the things that we do. Uh, so this car, again, retains all of its important uh, features. Like I said earlier, original VIN tag, trim tag, color combination, and drivetrain. Now, let's get into statistics. This example is one of only 3,754 built with the L71 option, which was the 427, 435 horse in both coupes and convertibles. So to tell you how rare it is, it's, this car is rarer than a 1970 Chevelle LS6. Okay, it's that rare. We have us in the detail room right now, we have a 1969 Camaro that is a L78, which is a 396, 375 horse. That is a super rare car that's gonna be part of our Barrett Jackson collection. This is actually more rare than even that car. So again, very rare. Now, this vehicle even becomes uh, sweeter in the sense that it's one of only 267 of all those cars that were built with the J56 special heavy duty brake option. Again, that's a really big deal. People are into big tank Corvettes, big brake Corvettes. It just adds a little sizzle to the stake. Now, this vehicle is accompanied with its original Corvette order copy, which is referenced as the tank sticker. Again, I have everything spelled out in this binder here. There's a ton of information. Uh, again, you can see it all on our website and so forth. It also has its original 1967 new vehicle inspection form. It also has a copy of the Corvette order form seven and a copy of the window sticker, which are all validated by the NCRS as GM slash UAW work produced the time the car was built. As I said earlier in the uh, presentation here, a lot of the paperwork is fraudulently made tank stickers, window stickers, protector plates, things of this nature. We verify that all of our documentation is original or copies of the original. Very important when you're investing in a classic car, muscle car, et cetera, that all of that stuff is documented as authentic. This particular car was ordered in this absolutely beautiful Greenwood green exterior. You can clearly see that awesome white Stinger hood. It has a green vinyl interior, tinted glass, which is in absolutely beautiful condition. Uh, it has 7.75 15-inch uh, white wall tires. Clearly, these tires are not white wall anymore, but they originally had white walls from the factory. Um, it just looks a little bit more uh, muscle would be the way to put it without the white wall tires. That's what the choice was there. Uh, these are, by the way, Firestone Deluxe Champion tires, and they are the correct size and so forth. Um, it also had a push-button AM FM radio, transistor ignition, again, the 435 horse V8, four-speed close ratio transmission, posi rear end with 355 gears, special suspension, vacuum power brakes, and heavy-duty brakes that I mentioned earlier, J56 option. So let's get into the story. I want you to follow this because this is again, one of the most special cars that we've had at MS Classic Cars and this is where it gets interesting. So besides all the things that I just said, you gotta follow this story because it's truly a, a, an unbelievable story. So it was purchased at Miller Chevrolet uh, located in Grave, uh, Grand Haven, uh, Michigan on June 22nd, 1967 by a gentleman by the name of Steve Brown who is still alive today. Uh, he's been contacted. He actually wrote a letter that's included. Um, he was an employee at the dealership at the time when he bought this car. Now he was into uh, racing cars with the SCCA, uh, which is a organization that most people know about. And he decided that's really what he was gonna do with this car was he was gonna race it. So he removed the original engine out of the car 
put it in a safe place, uh, and what he did is he installed an L88 engine, uh, which was a higher horsepower, very rare uh, setup. Again, very low production numbers. L88s are extremely valuable cars. He actually took an L88 engine for power and so forth and put it in the car. Um, so. He raced through the 1960s and the 1970s. We have a copy of the original Michigan title. We have copies of registrations, 1977, 85, 87, 89, and so forth. Um, we also have original photos of the car from 1967, 1968, and 1974 when it was actually on the Michigan uh, International Speedway, which are all included. So the car's got some cool history. At some point, I don't know exactly when, uh, Steve put the original engine back in the car. Uh, I guess it was probably in preparation to finally sell the car. It was time to move on. And he sold it to a company, uh, Seco Rockets Enterprises, which consisted of two gentlemen, Jim Barsano and Rich Borgeson, uh, which is documented with copies of the original title, registration transfer, and photos. The car underwent a frame-off restoration by Neighbors Brothers, which is a, a well-known name in the Corvette community, and it was completed in 1990. Uh, so, before I get into what happened with the car, we have all of the ownership history here. Uh, we have all the details. We have everything that you can imagine. Those photos that I just mentioned of the car on the speedway and everything else. It's truly amazing. And when this car was sold, again, you can reference this in our photo gallery. Uh, what ended up happening was he took pictures of it. So he kept the car from 1967 all the way to 1989. He owned that car for a long time, 22 plus years, and we have pictures of the car when it was purchased, again, by the second owner, pictures of the exterior, engine compartment, and so forth. Again, it is super documented. So, this is where it gets uh, interesting. After the car was restored, it was the same month in February of 1990, uh, the car was taken to a car show. It won best of show at the Houston Classic Car Show on February 18, 1990. Unfortunately, that night when everybody was sleeping uh, at the hotel, it would be February 19th between the hours of 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. The car was stolen from the parking lot at the La Quinta Motel. A stolen advertisement from the Driveline newspaper describing this complete car is included. They gave the police all the information on the car, all the numbers on the car. I mean, so much information. You can see that uh, advertisement for the stolen car in the newspaper within our documentation. Just a really cool uh, thing to be able to reference. After months, Okay, they put so much time and so much energy trying to find this car because clearly it was a special car. It had just been restored. Obviously, it was a, a completely matching numbers, original car with tons of documentation. They could not find the car. So we fast forward all the way uh, to obviously them getting a, a settlement payment from the insurance company, which is called North. Uh, Western Insurance Company, which again is all documented with paperwork. They claimed it as the car was stolen, non-recovered, and they reached a settlement and they got paid for the car. Life goes on. Well, this is what really is part of the story that is truly amazing. On September 3rd, 1991, we fast forward all that time later, the car was found in the Yuma, Arizona desert by U.S. Border Control pilot Hank Hayes during a search and rescue mission of a 15-year-old boy who had broken his leg uh, climbing in the canyon. So just try to vision this for a minute. Uh, the story that I had got uh, from this was the helicopter during the uh, rescue of the young boy uh, obviously was creating wind with its propellers and so forth. And this car actually was covered with a light blue car cover that actually came off the car. There was a tree uh, in the general vicinity as well. 
And if you read the report that we actually have posted on our website that was written uh, at the time they found the car, they saw a glitter of the windshield. It was a reflection from the sun in the windshield. That's when they spotted the car. So they did a whole investigation. The whole report's included. Again, I had to sum everything up within 4,000 or less characters. So I kind of fast forward a little bit and they came to the conclusion that the car was actually towed to its location when it was stolen uh, because when they found the car, it only had four miles on the odometer and the keys were still in the ignition. They said the car was in beautiful shape. Again, it's the Arizona desert. It's, a, it's beautiful weather. They've got a cover over the car. They didn't really drive the car. It's been covered a little bit by a tree. So lo and behold, you got this beautiful Corvette. Everybody was completely uh, blown away. The report of apprehension from the US Border Patrol and from the Yuma County Sheriff's Department report and photos of this car, which again, you can check out on our website when they found the car are all included. We also have a picture of it after they got it out of there and it was uh, sold back to the second owner. So the insurance company, which we have all documented in here, called the second owner back on the car and said, listen, we found your car. He couldn't believe it. They reached an agreement. There's again, paperwork transfer for back from the insurance company, back to the second owner, titles and everything else. It's insane. Again, how much documentation that there is. So that was November 10th, 1991, uh, that it officially became the second owner's car again. And the two of them were put back together. Although the car was in really nice condition, they decided they wanted to have the car restored again. It would be more of a light restoration uh, because the car had been sitting there and obviously, you know, out in the wind and, and dust and so forth. You know, they wanted to, they wanted to redo it. So they went to D&B Corvettes, uh, which again is fully documented in pictures of everything, the frame off and everything else. Um, it was completed in 1992. After completion, okay, the second time, the car won two NCRS regional top flight awards, and it also won a national top flight award. It also received Bloomington Gold, gold certified. You can see all that information in our description. At that point, it was also featured in VET Magazine, which was in April of 1999, which is included. We have two copies of that magazine. It's been with the last two owners for 23 years with limited exposure. The gentleman that I bought the car from, he's had it for like 13 years. Uh, he literally had it in a storage unit. Um, he took care of this car like it was his child. Uh, really nice guy and so forth. Uh, we became friendly. Uh, in the beginning, him and I, you know, it was like pulling teeth, uh, really, because he was in love with this car and knew he wanted to sell it. He was, you know, getting of age where he wasn't enjoying it as much as he should and wanted to kind of move on, but at the same token was still kind of attached to the car. So we had a rocky start, him and I. Uh, his name is Bill, but we've become friends since. Uh, really, really nice guy. And again, he really took care of this car. During the time that he owned the car, he decided to go ahead and have the original matching numbers engine rebuilt, spent a lot of money to have it rebuilt. And during that time of rebuilding the engine, he added L88 heads to the engine. The heads are very valuable and he kept the original L71 heads, which we have. Uh, again, that's included with the car. Super cool. This car runs amazing. Uh, it really is a, a special piece. Um, the engine is coupled to the original matching numbers uh, transmission. And once again, we have all of this information fully documented. We even have two pages of all the parts and all the assembly dates to show how accurately this car was restored. And again, like every vehicle that MS Classic cars sell, we went through this car in service. We went through it in the detail department to make it look as beautiful as we possibly could and make it ready for the new owner to enjoy. So once again, that is our presentation on this amazing car. 
The Desert Rat, now you understand the story uh, and the significance of this car. It's truly an unbelievable story. I'm really excited to have this car. So what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna go ahead and get in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Let you listen to how beautiful she runs. Again, it's a super great car to drive. Uh, Mike, who's our service manager, uh, made multiple comments. This is one of the best driving Corvettes that we've ever had here. Uh, so again, that wraps everything up. If you have not signed up, for the MS Classic Cars VIP email blast, please do so. Please, we would ask that you follow us on social media as well. We're on all the social media platforms. Uh, remember, the Barrett-Jackson auction, January 20th through the 28th, we are bringing 19 cars. They're selling at no reserve, and it includes this car right here. This particular one is actually selling on Saturday. Again, check out our website for all the details. We appreciate you watching, and as always, Rock and roll.